Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at Sims 4 and Sims 4 Get Famous Graffiti. For those of you guys who are new here, sometimes I like to I like to review graffiti in video games and kind of give a little bit of critique on it. Now, this video wouldn't be made possible without my friend Avocado. You can find all of her links in the description. She went ahead and took pictures of the graffiti in the game because I don't actually have the game. Massive shout out to her and massive thanks. Now, before we continue, I gotta say, for those of you guys who don't play Sims, The Sims uses its own fictional language with its own fictional alphabet. However, it looks like the graffiti artist either A just said, you know what, screw this alphabet, I'm not doing it, or B, that who is hitting me up? Or B, they decided to use English letters instead for some of the graffiti. So for that reason, we'll only look at like words and letter structures when they actually apply to either the Sims alphabet or when they apply to the English alphabet. Which leads me to my first criticism. Number one, Sims, EA, why don't you hire real graffiti artists to do real graffiti of your alphabet? Myself, along with any one of my subscribers, would have jumped at this opportunity. And I'll tell you what, as someone who understands letter structure, I certainly would have loved to have tried to do some wild style graffiti for you guys in The Sims alphabet. Now to directly contradict myself, because th that would be perfect for a video, we can take a look at this street art right here that also has some lettering above the blue character's head. And I gotta say, the character looks great. Whoever designed that, whoever made that, whoever drew that, Amazing job. I got no complaints there. And if you look at this one, you can see that the actual first letter actually lines up with the alphabet that I found online, which means that that first letter would be an H, but I can't seem to find any of the other letters in that alphabet. Because as we notice, a lot of these structures in Simlish are not segmented, meaning that all of the boxes are actually connected. As to where in the graffiti, we see that the potentially third and fourth letter are in fact segmented. Now this could be a mistake on the graffiti artist's part, because graffiti artists tend to stylize, and if they don't understand what letter structure is for English, then chances are they're certainly not gonna understand it for Simlish. But overall, I still like this design. Now this piece I like, this, this is one I like a lot. I couldn't really tell you what it says, this is kind of what made me think that it's not really using Simlish, because right here in this first orange letter, we can see that that is very clearly a B. Now if we take a same look at the alphabet that matched the street art in the beginning, you'll see that there is nothing like that in this alphabet for Simlish, which leads me to believe that this is actual English alphabet. And then maybe a Simlish hand style, which would be hilarious, right? Because <laughs> the graffiti artist would 100% be taking advantage of EA and Sims not knowing anything about graffiti. Because they could just say, oh yeah, no, that's Simlish, but it's graffiti. When in reality, <laughs> that ain't Simlish, homie. And we're gonna look at negative space management, which they handled amazingly. Also, letter and name weight and letter and name positioning were handled beautifully. Notice how the first letter, whatever letter it is, is slightly above and to the left of the second letter. And this is kind of reflected on the last letter. This creates a diamond formation that you can see in this piece. This gets stamp of approval. The highlights on this piece are not consistent at all, with some highlights being at the top of the very piece, and some highlights being at the left, and then some being at the right. That's three different light sources, but no three different intensities of light sources, or three different colors to indicate different light sources in the first place. That's a massive no. Now, because graffiti is really bold and it has really loud colors and really opaque colors, you tend to not find multiple light sources. You tend to not have dynamic lighting. In other words, they're using very basic lighting. So when I look at this piece, and I see that the very top left letter has a highlight on the top right, that tells me that, okay, your light source is in the top right. But then we go literally just right next to it and we have a light source on the top left. Okay, well, if we have a light source on the top left, let's say that this is getting highlighted, then why is all of this not highlighted? And all right, tell me something. If our light source is so intense that our top right light source is reaching the way left of the piece, then why the hell? Is it not reaching over here? Does that make any sense? It's a really basic mistake and something they should have totally not have messed up. This is another one I really like. Once again, I, I definitely see an S in there. Like, let me know if you guys see that too, right here. Like, that, that's definitely an S. This first one could technically be an O, it could also be a D. Like I said, I am a really big fan of this, but I don't really like how they had the exterior detail bubbles because that heavily flattens this nice dimensional piece. You see, they had a square receding into perspective, which adds a lot of depth, and then they shaded it on top of that, which only adds more depth. And then they go ahead and take the letters, don't outline the inside of the letters, but instead they decide to shade them in order to differentiate structure. 
which once again adds a ton of depth. And then they go ahead and undo all of that depth by throwing in some bubbles in the background. Not only did they not shade these bubbles, they didn't add a cast shadow to these bubbles, they didn't do much at all in order to give these bubbles any depth at all. Nor did they go ahead and add a, let's say, a drop shadow or a cast shadow onto the bubbles from the letters, which that alone could have made a massive difference. So although I love this, I'm gonna have to take points off for that loss of depth. Anyway guys, I think that's going to end today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if any of you guys like these paintings back here, be sure to check out the description and follow me over on Twitch. We do a lot of oil painting over there. Anyway, for those guys who are new here, we come out with weekly art videos. Be sure to subscribe. We'd love to have you part of the family. I'll catch you guys next time, but until then, peace.